have you ready? We are, today is Wednesday. It could be Wild Wednesday, it could be Wicked Wednesday, it could be Wonderful Wednesday, it could be any kind of Wednesday you want it to yeah. be. I'm going to declare it wonderful because my friend Evelyn is here and Evelyn is a <laughs> bright and shining star in this world. She loves plants, she loves people, she loves animals, oh, and she is more a than giver. <laughs> yeah, she loves, she loves animals more than people. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit about the event that you volunteer for, Dominic's? Can we talk a little bit yes. about what he does? So Dominic's, uh, he has a business in downtown Ballground. He has a pizza place and he has the, the most amazing pizza, pizza in ever. the world. Yeah, <laughs> he's from New York, so yes, yeah. yes, yes. Anyway, so he has opened this mission about, what, three, four months ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we have a food pantry uh, that a lot of people don't know about it, but we have a lot of items with delivery on the weekends. We only open on Saturdays from 9 to 1, mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of people volunteering. Um, um, Mike Smith Mike and Smith, Diane. Yeah, they yes. volunteer every yes. Saturday. Yes. They deliver all those bags. Um, we have about 12 to 14 places, houses that we deliver every week mm -hmm. because those people don't drive right. and they cannot get to the mission to pick up the groceries. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of people uh, donating like fresh produce, like you have no idea, like mm -hmm. lettuce, tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, eggs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we get a good, good bit of um, stuff that people that um, donate. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else can I say about diapers. our mission? Well, diapers. Oh yes, they, yes, we have a lot of diapers. Like I was impressed with the amount of diapers that we have. So we encourage people to go on their Facebook. Uh, it's called Dominic's Mission. Uh, it's located in Ballground, um, right next to what is that place, Rife? Uh, yeah, it's the one that's the restoration The stuff. restoration yeah. place, yes. It's Resty right next stuff. to it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so pretty. Really they cool have stuff. all the Halloween stuff already, yeah, so yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, you can like their page. You can go on their uh, website. It's dominicsmission.com. You can learn more about it. You can uh, volunteer. You can donate. Everything that you donate is tax deductible, so you mm -hmm. can deduct it mm -hmm. on your taxes. Mm -hmm. And it's a great mission. We had our first, um, the thing that we did at the Wheeler House. At the Wheeler House that I didn't uh, get to go to, yeah. I have to say, because I was having surgery. Yes. And it let was me tell amazing. you, I wanted to be there. Yeah, yeah. the food yeah. was delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything yeah. was perfect. It was a lot of people volunteered. All the owners in downtown Ballground, around Canton and Cherokee County, they donated it. So it was a great event, it was mm -hmm. a fundraiser. The first one we had was in July, what, July? Mm -hmm. Was it July, mm -hmm. mid-July? It was, yep. Uh, we're planning on having another one possibly March, April next year. So like I say, if you wanna follow their page, go on Facebook, it's called Dominic's Mission, or you can go on their website, it's dominicsmission.com. You can donate your time, you can donate yep. items, uh, just help the community. I wrote a check, the, the, you and I yeah. went there for mm -hmm. lunch and I just wrote him a check and I said, I really don't know what your mission is gonna be, but I trust you and I have mm -hmm. seen, he is a, a very ethical, wonderful gentleman. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And yes. I knew I could trust that my money would be in our community, it would be serving our families oh, yes. and it would be doing well. And so I wrote him a check. Yeah. And um, I want to do that again because he, it was in his heart. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how many meals he gives away weekly, oh, gosh, yes. he gives away more than some businesses sell. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. But y'all, he's a New Yorker. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all have noticed, but Evelyn's not from around here. Yeah. <laughs> but she came here and she adapted well to loving our communities. Mm -hmm. And that's what life is supposed to be about. So. Mm -hmm. You don't have a copy of this book yet, but I'm going to read something about friends, mm -hmm. and it applies to you and I yes. and to many of us. Every day I've made a commitment to y'all. I'm going to share one page of Mike's book, and I hope you will pick it up. I bought several, and I've already given them away. So um, it, it is such a light in this, in this often dark world. Okay, friends. Friends have always been very important to me, and I bet they have been to you as well. I learned that early on in elementary school, at a point in my life when I didn't have any, or at least I thought I didn't have any, 
I grew up in downtown Marietta, and when I started school, I, w I could walk there. I developed some good friendships. In my mind, I can still recall their names, good memories and good friends. However, halfway through the fifth grade, after the Christmas holidays, we moved from there to the country as I called it back then, and I did the same thing. I left all those good friends and that hurt. I rode a bus to school for the first time and I knew no one on the bus. I knew no one in my class and I hated to go to school each day. I was shy and withdrawn, and I'm reading this for Evelyn because her son said the same <laughs> like, exact things. This is Caden's story, okay. <laughs> And it took several months before I made some new friends at the school, friends I still have to this day. But the feeling having no friends and feeling isolated even around people has never left me. I still recall it in my mind. If I could erase it out of my memory, I would. That's why friends are so special to me. God never intended on us to go through life alone. Adam found that out early on. I've often wondered why God did not create Eve at the same time he created Adam. I believe he wanted to let Adam see how much he needed Eve before God arranged the first marriage. Can you imagine what Adam said when he woke up and saw Eve for the first time? Just like a Christmas morning, what a package that was. <laughs> now he had a wife and a best friend. The Bible talks about friends. Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for, for adversity. The Bible spoke of David and his best friend, Jonathan. In Samuel 18:3, it says, Jonathan loved David as much as himself. The Bible said they were kindred spirits. They both had the same beliefs, attitudes, and feelings. To have a friend like Jonathan, you've got to be like David. And to have a friend like David, you've got to be like Jonathan, a best friend who will always defend you when you're not there, pick you up when you are knocked down, and call you out when you're in the wrong. Someone to hold you accountable. I pray we all have a friend like that. When we do, we can say what Arthur E.B. White said in his book, Charlotte's Web. You have been my friend. That in itself is a tremendous thing. Yes, it is. So friendship is so very important. And when Evelyn moved to ball ground, her young son said, oh, I'll never make <laughs> friends. Well, now he is the star of the swimming team. When it came to swimming with a new group, he said, I'll never make friends. He is the star oh, of the swimming team. All those people were cheering him up. I was like, okay, how many friends do you have already? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but yeah. it is hard. I can remember leaving Orlando as a almost a ninth mm -hmm. grader, and I was very angry with my mother because we were leaving Orlando, moving back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll never fit in. I'll never have the friends because yeah. I grew up in Orlando with my forever friends that I'm still friends with today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's tough on kids. And the changes is always scary. But yeah, yeah. But Caden did like great. Yeah, he and loved it, yeah. I remember the first day he got on the bus, he was very nervous and he was worried. He had. Uh, He's like, How do you know the driver? He the had bus Lisa. driver already. <laughs> Lisa was we the just drove here. <laughs> <weird. laughs> yeah. So uh, it, you know, friendships get you through those days you can't. And when it, the last paragraph says, you have a friend who will call you out and correct you. And I, I have Miss Vicky. Mm. who keeps me in line or yeah. gets a hickory to me so, <laughs> yeah. you know, and she'll say da, 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 da. Yeah. and that's what we all need we all need that so yeah. um, having friends getting through those days that you think you can't possibly get through it that's what it's about and last night I was fortunate enough to spend some time at the Ball Ground Historical uh, meeting and, and got to hear from a dear dear friend and we're going to talk about that in a minute but I want to hit on the real estate market, Evelyn, because we have seen it. Uh, it went here, it went back here, <coughs> it's leveled out. Mm -hmm. What do we yeah. see happening? Well, I think the market is changing, it's not crashing. No, exactly. It's, it's not, not going anywhere. So no. a lot of people are like scared, the interests are high. Uh, as realtors, we have to make sure that we tell our clients don't freak out. Mm -hmm. You need a house to live, like whether you're renting or you're buying. Right. So you rather pay rent to yeah. somebody else's mortgage or right. you want to make your own payment towards your own house. Right. So always And what is the interest lenders. today? Today, I think Samantha. it's like 6.5, 6.2, depending <coughs> on your credit. You know, your credit is... The first home yeah. we ever bought, 13 and three quarter percent interest. Oh 
<coughs> at Jasper Banking Company, the payment mm -hmm. was $726.40 a month. And we paid for that house, and for anybody in Jasper, you all know it's where the Bojangles is today. <laughs> because we bought it, we took a risk. It was 13 and 3 quarters percent, but we had a choice. We were living in a double wide with four kids, mm -hmm. and this house came available. And mm -hmm. I didn't even ask the interest rate, Evelyn. I walked into the bank and I said, I want it to buy this house. You can make the payments, it should not be. Scary. Duh. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Not be scary and and I did it, and and my husband never once said, "What was the interest rate on that loan?" Mm -hmm. We didn't yeah, care. Should, we knew yeah. we could make the payment. The payments, 12, yeah. Seven twenty-six. If you're comfortable a month. with the payments, yeah. you yeah. should move on and just <coughs> do it. Do it. Do yeah. it. Do it, exactly. do it, do it, do yeah. it. Doesn't Nike say that on their shirt? Just yeah. do it. <laughs> just, just, just do it. it. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Um, we have seen some houses sit a little longer than mm -hmm. they should. We yeah. have a beautiful, beautiful home here in LJ. It's a three bedroom, two bath ranch on two just under porch. an acre of land with two of the most amazing porches. And I can just say, you see this book? Me and this book sit on the back porch. <laughs> if I get to show the house, then after the people leave, I sit on the porch and read my book. <laughs> so I can yeah. tell you, I'm addicted to the porch. But it is on Highway 52 West, which is just south of the top of Fort Mountain and is the most beautiful drive in North Georgia in the fall. Mm -hmm. This house should sell. It's two ninety nine nine, and it should sell very quickly. A lot of people are like, well, I wanted a little bit more yard or I don't want any yard to keep up. You can cut this grass in 15 minutes and that includes weed eating. I mean, it's easy cut and it has amazing neighbors nearby. And that's what I really, really like about it. The community across the street, it's got a neighbor who has um, muscadines and, and uh, grapes and they'll share with you. It has a guy who has tomatoes they'll share with you. Everybody's just really nice in this mm -hmm. little community. And I said, that's what you're looking for. If you're moving to the country and you don't have any friends up here, why not choose a little nestled community that you have a good neighbor here, a mm -hmm. good neighbor here, and then you immediately have friends. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. So don't be afraid to take that plunge. It is four miles outside downtown LJ. So four miles and there's a Dollar General close by. So <laughs> there you go. how much better does it get? So pick up the phone and call us. We would love to show you this house. We also have a three acre track listed here. And it's buildable, it is non-restricted, it is an amazing piece of property. We have it listed for 109 and somebody said, that seems high. And I thought, are you kidding me? I paid 60000 for three acres in 2005. Yeah. So it's unrestricted, you can have animals, you can, you know, it's, it's an Anything. amazing, amazing piece of property. And it is like five minutes from the Dairy Queen. Yep. So it's That's it's awesome. True. And and there are just there are opportunities in Gilmer County, but you just have to get out there and find them. And and you know, find something that's convenient, find something that's easy to get to, find something that you're comfortable with. And if you're not comfortable on the front porch of this house or the back, the back porch, porch. <laughs> something's wrong with you. <laughs> something's wrong with you. I love the back porch. I just love the setting of the back porch. And you can see the neighbor next door's garden and see her tomatoes growing. So I just love it. I'm, I'm in love with the place. And I said, I wish it would hurry up and sell because I might buy it and put it on the rental market. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to do that. I don't need anything else Airbnb. to take care of. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But the, um, the real estate market is it's gonna it's gonna be fine. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's it's changing a little bit. People are shopping wiser, I think. Mm -hmm. They're not offering rushing. They're yes. not rushing to like, oh yeah. a one yeah. house came on the market, let twenty people jump for it. Right. You know, it's like people are taking their time. Thinking a little bit more. They're doing inspections, so we're normalizing. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we're doing inspections again, we're not waiving inspection, we're not waiving appraisals. So we're doing the normal thing that we used to do before the market was crazy. Mm -hmm. So I think we are normalizing. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we not, need. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we need. If you're yeah. looking for a home in ball ground, they are few and far between and rather uh, still very high priced. Mm -hmm. And it is because we are ball ground mm -hmm. and we are a walking community and we are a you the know, best restaurants. The best everything. <laughs> we have the I best mean, of everything. We hate to brag, but we yeah, live in ball no, ground yeah. and we love that community. Yeah. And last night when we went to the Historical Society, I thought how sweet it is that these people gather. But then I also was disappointed that there weren't more people there because mm -hmm. 
You know, 9-11 was a day in American history that we will never forget. I no. mean, I know exactly where I was. You know exactly where you were. You were working in New York oh, yeah. when that happened. And um, I was in Georgia and immediately got cold chills and immediately panicked and thought, what's going to happen to our country? Mm -hmm. Are we being totally invaded? We, we really didn't know what we were facing. But to be in New York, did the city just utterly shut down? Well, I tell you something like, so I moved uh, to America in 2001 mm -hmm. and my dad came and visited me the year after that to take me back because mm -hmm. he wanted me to go back and he was heading towards the city that day. So, oh and I remember that morning telling him where to take the, the train and where to stop and everything. And when that happened, I was just like, oh my gosh, cold, like, yeah where is he you know yeah. he has no cell phone oh my god nothing gosh. so i was like because he was just visiting so you know he didn't have any any you know type of communication how or did anything. you reach like, him uh he ended up calling me saying that he stopped uh, i think he stopped like three stops before heading to new york uh -huh. because he thought that was the uh the time to stop uh -huh. and he got lost <laughs> Oh, so he wow. took the train back. So that's a blessing that, that he, he did got not lost. Go, yeah, yeah, he did yeah. not go to the city, but it took him a while to get back because everything was closed. Mm -hmm. They shot him everything. Like, it was so scary. Like, oh, it was horrible. Like, mm -hmm. I just watching the news, like, life news, it's just like... And it was real. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was real. Yeah, and our thinking, country like, attacked yeah. on our soil by yeah. terrorists and then you see it twice because yeah. it happens one time and then you see the second time and you're like oh no oh this yeah is, yeah this, this wasn't something an accident big. yeah yeah, this is yeah something it wasn't big. an accident well we want to yeah. show a picture of my dear friend paul nelson as he appeared last night at the historical society in ball ground and again i was very very disappointed that there weren't a lot of people My there people. it should have been packed it should have been full and there's sweet patsy jordan with him and they gave him an eagle and they gave him um, a, a presentation he did an amazing job and um, i can tell you every single week paul loses another friend this didn't end on 9 11. the firefighters the emts the uh, plumbers, the Volunteers, electricians, yeah. everybody who was in that site has now like probably 80% of them have developed cancers because it got in their lungs, it got in, it's affecting their, their hearts. Systems, yeah. It's terrible and Paul just every single week he gets a notice that somebody else has died. And so we're going to share a little bit of footage now that, uh, what in the world happened? <laughs> we have missed our I LRJ. don't know what happened. We are doing, uh, yeah. Okay, there you go. This is 9-11 as it happened in reality. These belong to, uh, to Paul Nelson, who was a detective in New York <laughs> at the time. <laughs> this is Miss Evelyn's canning. <laughs> this is how Evelyn cans now. I'm teaching Evelyn to can. <laughs> this is how I this can. This is not the way to do it. Yeah. But um, this, these truly, this is what America saw on 9-11. Yeah. This is the um, aftermath of the first plane to hit. And uh, it still doesn't seem real. You know, we've lived it. We have seen what happened. We have seen many, many people die later from brain cancers, from lung cancers, so many different things. And one day I want to have Nancy Wirtz on and I want her to tell her story oh, yeah. <laughs> how she they went by boat, by boat in Long Island to rescue her husband. So this is, this is a time you look at that cloud and you think about the debris and you think about the people who ingested that and breathed that in. And today, there are so many funerals who have happened from the after effect of that debris. And it just, um, it, it doesn't seem real. You know, it still does not seem real. And uh, it was very, very real. And it was terrorism on our soil by evil, evil people. And um, we, we should never get over it. And we should never forget. We should all be flying an American flag today at our homes. We should all be gathering in our churches and praying for our nation. We should all be supporting our firefighters, our EMTs, our police officers, because today they are still paying the price of things that happened on that day. 
on 9-11. And um, I think, you know, when Alan Jackson wrote about where were you when the world stopped turning, I know exactly where I was. I know the moment, I know exactly where I was. Yeah. I still get cold chills thinking about it. But it was that song, and he wrote the song, I think he said, in 20 minutes. And it told the story of America that day. So, um, yeah, we don't need to forget 9-11. 9-11 is a day that we should never, you know, fly your flags, support your country, um, show up in your churches, pray for those people who are still dying of cancer because of that. And, you know, you think about Scotty is a home repairman. If he had been in New York, he would have been a plumber. He would have been an electrician. Yeah, yeah. He would have been in that building. Or even volunteering. At, like a at, lot of people yeah. volunteer. And have yeah. the after effects that then mm -hmm. took their lives. So yeah. it's it's very, very sad, very, very sad. But now <laughs> we've been canning a little bit and y'all got to see a little joke because when I was teaching <laughs> Evelyn to can, then she sent me that picture. And I said, yeah. she's getting it. She's finally learning how to can. <clears throat> I have been in a house that has mildew and I'm paying the price for it this week. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can rid it of it. I've, I've really struggled and suffered with it, but um, you know, what I have, my mom was a smoker, and so I've always had lung problems. <clears throat> but these people who went into those buildings were healthy and were just volunteering or just doing their job. And then later they got the terrible diagnosis of and cancer. And they were there for hours, hours, and hours days, and hours, yeah. Days, yeah. days. And one of the stories that Paul told last night is, is too graphic, I think, for me to tell but it was after days of him working and he had all this stuff caked on his face. Mm -hmm. And there was no water to wash it off and so it gets in your skin, it gets in your lungs, it gets in your, these guys didn't think about themselves as they were recovering body parts, mm -hmm. as they were recovering personal effects, as they were doing everything they could to make this. You don't think about, oh, I'm getting dirty or I'm no, breathing this no, or anything. You just keep no. on going because you're trying to save life or thinking mm -hmm. that you will find somebody yeah, there, yeah, yeah. you know? And, and not, I, don't, I don't think they found anybody. They found anybody. And, and he said last night, he said the largest body parts they found were not complete bodies. They didn't find complete bodies because it was like, he, he said it was described as a meat grinder, basically. And, and it just, it was horrific. But these police officers, these EMTs, these firefighters today are having nightmares. They are reliving this over and over and yeah. over. It's and traumatizing. It, it is traumatizing. And, and they deserve credit and they deserve praise. And so show up in your churches and as we approach 9-11, pray for these people who literally didn't think about what are the after, after effects of me going in and rescuing or saving or even just pulling out and identifying people. Mm -hmm. They didn't think about the after effects for themselves. So um, it's, it is a time that we need, to, we need to be praying for them and don't forget. And last night when I walked in and there weren't any more people there than there were, I was very disappointed. So. Shame, shame on all of us. But okay, we're gonna take a commercial break and then we're gonna come back to my song. Okay, Take Me Home Country Roads. Way back in the day, I had a 66 Chevelle and I would drive to Blue Ridge all the time and I would listen to John Denver singing Take Me Home Country Roads. It was my anthem. I'd left Atlanta, I fled the city and I came up here. I got here just as fast as I could. <laughs> And that is to be attested because one of my first trips up here, I got a ticket running a hundred, and my precious, precious cousin Von Seal and Marvin came and signed my bond. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the police officer said, "Ma'am, why are you going so fast?" And I said, "Well, I was in a hurry." And he said, "That's very obvious." Um, we love the country life. We love the country living. We love gardening. We love canning. We love everything about this place. Mm -hmm. And and so I think this song is very appropriate. It's not done by John Denver, it's done by Mr. Ella J. So y'all, after the commercial, you're gonna get to hear one of my favorite songs. And uh, John Denver was one of those, we lost him way too soon, but he left such a legacy of music. And we're gonna get to hear one of those songs in just a couple of minutes, then we'll be back with you. Whether 
you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The American Made Music Festival returns to Hiawassee, Georgia, September 15th through 17th. This three-day festival features the best of country, bluegrass, and gospel music, including special guests Craig Morgan, Lone Star, Ricky Skaggs, and Kentucky Thunder, Daly and Vincent. Stars and Stripes Forever, America. Three day and single day tickets available, along with on site camping by the lake. The American Made Music Festivals with Daly and Vincent, presented by Gus Arendale and Springer Mountain Farms. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Come on, darling, take me downtown, because I want to see some of that country Blue Ridge Georgia. Here we go. Here we go. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more.
can't tell you how many times I've listened to that song. John Denver did it. I had it on an eight track in my 66 Chevelle and I would head up the road and I might have been usually speeding, but that's before we had 515 and before we had all the traffic, I would go up old highway five and I would put that in and I would play it, play it, play it, play it, play it. Love the song, love the man, love the, uh, the memories of, you know, these mountains are just something special. And uh, I know you miss Darby because y'all used to go hiking oh, yeah. a lot, don't you? And and she's that was a love in the beach. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, she's she's she wanted to move to Florida. She's she's from Florida. Right, so. right. Um, and actually, her yeah. dad and I went to school together, Isn't that which crazy? is so weird yeah. because when we met, we're yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so it was it's wild. Crazy. Yeah. It was wild, but she's but coming she, uh, Labor Day weekend. So. Cool, cool. Everybody who leaves these mountains can't wait to get back to the mountains. Now, we've seen the area transition a little bit because a lot of people are not just buying second homes up here, they are retiring to these mountains. Mm -hmm. And I think COVID had a lot to do with that mm -hmm. because yeah. we had a little bit more openness and freedom and you know, it wasn't, you didn't have to mask up and you didn't have to stop living. And I think that's what really helped the economy here yeah. so much. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Because people were still saying, yeah, we're open, come and eat with us and, and enjoy our food and enjoy our company and, and yeah. so, so I think that helped our economy. Actually, one of our commissioners was on and he said that we did better, I think on the tax structure as far as sales tax during COVID than before COVID. So well, think about it is a lot of people were working from home. You mm -hmm. are not commuting. You're not using your car. Your car. You're not paying for gas. Right. And so you got money to spend going out to eat or shopping. Well, and you have kids. Yeah. You're spending all that extra money on, <laughs> on snacks. <laughs> yeah, 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 but. yeah, yeah. And and that's one of the things. Um, what about inventory in Gilmer County? Did, have you checked lately what's the inventory up here? Are there a lot mm -hmm. of houses on the market? Because I know usually they sell really, really quick. They're, they still sit in some houses or stay. Well, I was reading through, um, well, Samantha sent me something about the market. Mm -hmm. That now the houses are staying in the market for like three to four weeks, which it's is kind of like normal. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But like I said, you know, we have to normalize to how it was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, like houses, you will get a client, call you, you go check the house, tell them, you know, some repairs to be done before we list mm -hmm. the house. We mm -hmm. take pictures, we listed the house. You got two, three showings during mm -hmm. the week, maybe a couple more on the weekend. Right. And then we, you know, we get people interested asking questions about the property. They still be in other houses. And then they will send an offer in the third or four week, right? Right. But right. now, when COVID happened and we have a house listed, it was like a hundred people going, they wanted to go on the same time. So mm -hmm. they were trying to compete for one house. Mm -hmm. So it's now tough. I think we're going back to what how what the normal thing is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like houses are listed and staying there in the market for three to four weeks, which is not bad. It's no, not, you no, know, no. but I mean, you just need to tell your sellers, if you still want to sell your house, you know, you need to make some repairs, mm -hmm. you need to make some, you know, maintain your house obviously mm -hmm. you know if you see something wrong and you plan on listing it 
I know at Kusawati for a while there was very, very low inventory. Now Nothing, there's very yeah, high inventory. More, yeah, yeah there are a lot of yeah. houses on the market. And I think fall has something to do with it because people assume that the mountains are going to be full of people during the fall. Mm -hmm. So fall is the time to put yeah. your house on the, on the market. Yeah. So it changed the low inventory to a little to bit that, higher yeah. inventory. Now we have a beautiful home at Kusawati listed. Mm -hmm. It is, it is mint condition, absolutely fabulous, has three lots. It is amazing. It is on a quiet, quiet street. Mm -hmm. And I'm shocked that it hasn't sold yet mm -hmm. because it is furnished, almost fully furnished yeah. and with beautiful, beautiful furnishings and it is immaculate. Mm -hmm. It is immaculate and I kept saying, what is going on here? It's yeah. the perfect floor plan for rental. You could live upstairs, rent out I mean, the, the downstairs. Porch, the wraparound porch it's is beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing and, and I'm shocked because yeah. it's priced correctly. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't sold yet, but mm -hmm. it's because there is more inventory. And because of what it is. Yeah, and, and that's something unusual because at first it was very low, low inventory. And people weren't putting their houses on the market. And then a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon. We saw this in ball ground. Somebody overpriced a home, over $100,000 overpriced it. And then reality check hit in and it sold for 150 less than he listed mm -hmm. it for. Yeah, yeah, that's a big Well, we have difference. another one right now in downtown Bowground. Yes, that's it's overpriced. Yeah. Yes, way overpriced. Yeah. And um, I don't quite get that because I think shoppers are a little bit wiser today mm -hmm. and they are finally saying, we're gonna do our homework. Oh, and well, we're, we're gonna, gonna take sure. our time. You know, we're gonna take our time. We're gonna check and see if we like this area, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if we wanna change no point in rushing schools in. or not. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, it's it's better right now because people are not feeling rushed. Yeah. They're not feeling like, okay, your interest rate is three percent, so we need to find you a house before it goes higher. So they're yeah. like, oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. And then don't do an inspection, don't do an appraisal. Let's get it. And yeah, and you're like, don't <laughs> okay. do that. Yeah. As yeah, their agents, that. we always recommend that you do that. Never waive your inspection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And inspection, or your appraisal. <laughs> yeah, and inspection is important. And I was explaining this to two of my clients last week. I've been working with them for over a year, mm -hmm. and we made an offer on a property that was way over way over listing mm -hmm. price and they said should we go higher i said no yep. unless you have a boatload full of money that you want to put with your appraisal yes. because it's not going to appraise for that mm -hmm. and your lender is not going to say well we just like you so much we're going to let you have extra yes. money that's yeah, not going to happen no. no it does not work like that <laughs> no it doesn't work so yeah. you have to keep your common sense in play yes yeah. and that's tough and sometimes i mean like i have I've walked into a dated house, but I see it finished. I also see the budget to finish it. Mm -hmm. And so when people walk in and go, well, I like a couple of things about this, but I'd want to change it. Before we get in the third room, I'm already racking it up. $80,000. <laughs> yeah, that's and what I do every yeah. time I look at the and house. I'm like 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the money? Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. Do all this repair? Yeah. And, and these are first time buyers that are already struggling to get mm -hmm. their first time buyer status. And you're going, you can't do everything you yeah. want in this dated yeah. house. Yeah. You either accept it as a beautiful dated house and you live in it, mm -hmm. or you better call mom and daddy and say, go ahead and give me my inheritance. You yeah. Know? So it's, it's a very strange time, but when my little buyers, bless their heart, they wanted this place so bad. And when they said, would you think we were crazy if we offered more, and they were already offering way more than no. we should have, yeah. I said, no. as your agent, I can't let you do that no. because you would have to cough up a bunch of cash. Yeah. And they said, it really? Not appraise. And I said, you have to have an appraisal to back this up because you're getting a loan. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, yep. so that's how it works. Yeah. And that's how it works. It has to work for everybody. Your lender has to be happy. Your seller has to be happy. Your buyer has to be happy. And you always have to communicate with everybody, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. like. and, and the one thing I told them, we looked at a house that was not in a great area at all. And I said, I can help you paint it. I can repair the deck for you. I have Scotty the magic man who can do anything you want <laughs> done, but he can't change the neighborhood. The location. <laughs> and yeah. it is right across the street from a really, really, really yeah, negative the security, place. Yes. Security uh, cameras and, or security systems. And I said, yeah. every time you leave your driveway, you're gonna be angry at me because you're gonna look straight at that. Oh, yeah. And you're gonna be mad because I was your agent. So I said, 
y'all decide, whatever y'all decide, I'm right here with you. Yeah. But I always tell people, if you live here two years and you decide you want to upgrade, you better hope somebody else loves this place as much as you did. Because if you don't, you are stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So don't emotionally buy a place that you can't market later. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't emotionally buy a place that you can't market later. And that is one of the most important things. And um, it's, I've seen people get their heart broken because they're like, well, you know, I loved it, but nobody else likes all these steps or nobody else likes this location. Yeah, nobody to think else about likes like it. five years, at least five years down the road. What yeah. are you planning on doing with the house? Are you That's staying it. there? You, moved, you wanted to move, you wanted to upgrade, you want to have more kids. All that stuff. We mm -hmm. opened the door to a place that they were willing to overpay for, and there was a steep, no backyard at all. It has oh, two yeah. acres of land with it, Not usable. but the two <laughs> acres is a gully. And yeah. I looked at them and I said, what do y'all want to do? And they said, <laughs> Well, it says two acres, and I said, okay, y'all go walk it and find it. You know, I'm like, uh-uh, you can't do this. Because if you have two acres for privacy, it's perfect. Well, this house, when you went down the driveway, there were places on both sides, the driveway, and then they were right on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. though you had two acres, the two acres was behind the house, down a gully, down a ravine, oh, yeah. the two acres was useless. And they said, well, we wanted privacy. I said, you're not getting mm -hmm. it here. Mm -hmm. So be a wise shopper yeah because in the end maybe when your parents get sick and you have to move in with them or you have to move them in with you or whatever you better be in a situation that you can market your home again mm -hmm. for somebody else yep and that's that's important now one of the other things we do besides real estate we're <laughs> canning <laughs> I'm teaching her to can. Now, have you figured out that canning's a lot of trouble? Mm, a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. But blackberries and tomatoes and pear relish, and then we're going to make pear preserves next. Do you understand that in the winter when you go to your cabinet and you pick that out, you forget how hard it was to do all this. <laughs> yeah. So it's good, and it's good for you. Everybody better enjoy it. Yeah, everybody better enjoy it. But when Evelyn sent me the can of her canning and it was a tomato soup in a can, I thought that was perfect. I can remember the first year I made jelly. That's I didn't cannon. understand that it went to, yeah, there's your cannon. I didn't understand that it went to sugar if you didn't eat it soon enough. And I made way too much jelly. And I gave jelly to everybody I knew. Everybody I knew was eating jelly. And you have to make it and use it up. But years and years ago, my husband called me and he said, you better get out here and straighten this boy out. And I said, what is wrong? And he said, your son is throwing perfectly good canned stuff in the dumpster. I said, what is he throwing in the dumpster? Well, my mother-in-law, they were cleaning out one of her old smoke houses and they found cases and cases and cases of green beans. Oh God. Absolutely nothing wrong with these green beans, but they had been canned for 16 years. Oh. 16 years. I found some in the house in Cartersville. We ate every bit of these green you beans. You did? Ew. I, 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 I opened the cabinets and I was like, what is that? And they were green beans. I was like, ew. As long as they're sealed good, these, I gave them to Miss I mean, Aubrey. they look good, but I was like, oh. You did not no. throw them away. Well, I did. Oh, no. I did because I was I like, well, I not teach you anything? I was like, maybe I can get the, the can, you know, the glass stuff, but I was like, ew. No, oh, Evelyn, there was nothing wrong with them. <laughs> well, my husband crawled down in the dumpster, got all the green beans out of the dumpster oh, that, that his son had put in there. And I gave them to friends and neighbors and we ate them. And every single can was eaten and it was perfect. His oh, wow. mom had canned them. She pressure canned them. There was absolutely nothing wrong with them. So How long is it good for? You say well, 16 years? these were 16 years, years old. <laughs> so what are you going back, 30? <laughs> oh, wow. As long as the seal is good and the product looks good, mm -hmm. I, I, we've never had a problem. Mm. Never had a problem. So when you put up stuff, I have some watermelon pickles and I want to go back and visit this lady. I walked into her basement and she is like, to me, she's the canning queen. Everything is immaculate. She has it color coded. Color. It is absolutely gorgeous. She has a canning kitchen downstairs in her house and she made the most amazing watermelon rind pickles. Hmm. I would never have thought of that. But they're sweet and they almost taste like red hot candy. 
and they're so good. And I said, oh my gosh, well, every time I would go to visit, she'd give me a jar of them. And I haven't been to visit lately, so I need to go. But, but canning is an art. It truly is an art. And, and when you do it correctly, not only are you feeding your family, but it makes you feel good mm -hmm. because you look at that product and, and you've done it, you know. Yeah. And I just showed Evelyn 300 ears of corn <laughs> that Dawn is putting up right now. Dawn's putting up peaches and, peaches and cream corn because her husband eats corn and sauerkraut every day of his life. So my daughter, you know, she shucks it, she scrapes the corn, she freezes it, and then she does it in those vacuum seal bags. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you open it, it's just as fresh as it came yeah. off the cob. So, so take advantage of the bounty that that's God has idea, given yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what it's about. And if you get out, Apples. Have you ever had homemade applesauce? Mm -hmm. That's so easy to make. And if you get the good apples, you can even get an apple that's too ripe and it's good to make applesauce with. But in the winter, there's nothing any better than some warm applesauce with a good old homemade biscuit. Can you make yeah. homemade biscuits? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. And can you make meatloaf? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you bring it to my house, I put it in the oven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's something about bringing something out of your kitchen as a gift that people just love. They love it. Yeah. So, so you now have home canned tomatoes. I go get my seeds in the garden and I bring it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now this year you grew squash, cucumbers, and, cucumbers. and, and now you have beets planted and what else? I have beets, pumpkin, um, collard greens and cauliflower. Mm -hmm. And collard greens are like, I'd rather have that than chocolate cake. I love, love, love collard greens. That's, Daddy that's loves my that thing. Too, yeah. yeah, yeah, I that's love That's what it. I bought then, because I was like, mm, nobody Try that. that. Try that, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. And and it's one of those things that's good for you, and mm -hmm. it's easy to grow, mm -hmm. and it's a, a fall or winter crop, so yeah. so it'll be fun. Yeah. And uh, that's gonna be interesting. Now, the, the garden in Nelson is available to, who can be involved in that? Anybody. How do you get involved you just in buy it? $25, you bring it to the city, mm -hmm. pay $25, they take cash or um, cash or check, and then you get a 20 by 20. Mm -hmm. And then there is water there, there is a shed there, that you have tools, uh, any, I mean, whatever you want to use mm -hmm. to like, you know, plant or whatever, a tiller. So, I mean, I tried it and I love it. Mm -hmm. They asked me again, like, you know, do you want to keep your garden? And I was like, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I no, made, you brought me some squash, and I'd never made squash soup. And I'm mm -hmm. going to give you all this simple, simple recipe. And it was absolutely crazy because it was, it was kind of an accident waiting to happen. She brought me squash that I thought was too big to fry. So I diced it all up, and I put it in a crock pot in chicken broth. Mm -hmm. And I boiled it and cooked it down, and I put an onion in it. I diced up the onion and put the onion in there. So I boiled squash with onion in chicken broth. Mm -hmm. And I kept watching it, and I kept watching it, and I thought, am I going to make a chicken, am I going to make a squash casserole? What am I going to make? So I used half of it to make a squash casserole, and I used the other half to make something I'd never made before in my life. <laughs> I took a block of cream cheese, eight ounces of cream cheese. Everything with cheese is good. <laughs> everything with cream cheese is good. I put it in the crock pot, and I stirred it down, and it disintegrated, and then I took that and put it in my blender, and it thickened perfectly, and it was the best soup I've ever made in my life. And it was super <laughs> simple. It was super, super simple. There you go. I used squash, onions, chicken broth, salt and pepper, yes. and then a block cream of cream cheese. That's it, y'all. And put it in your crock pot. If you have some squash left over, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one out there to you. If you have zucchini, mix up the zucchini and the yellow squash, mm -hmm. and do it that way, and make a fall soup. I put a little tiny bit of allspice in it, just a little bit, and then salt and pepper, and it was <coughs> it was beyond fantastic. Delicious. It was really, really good, and it was so easy. And I did teach you that when you're frying the squash, you pick them a little bit smaller, because yours, hers got. Well, I was trying to pick it every three <laughs> days, and I go every three days to get five or six, and they were like huge. I was like, oh my God, they grew over overnight. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's hard to learn, but yeah. uh, but it's so cool. Now, in your country, in Peru, did y'all ever garden? No. No, we live in the city. Okay. <laughs> we don't have any, <laughs> so, any place to So like, this is all new to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. I wanted to try it, because I was like, oh, this is nice. 
But yeah, and plus, uh, you know, I have met people there, which I was impressed because I thought it was going to be more women. Mm -hmm. But and then we have this like group chat and there's like mostly men. Really? Yeah. And they're like, really, they know what they what know what they're doing. doing because yeah, every time yeah, I talk to yeah. them, I was like, oh, what are you planting there? And like, oh, we're doing this. And I was like, oh, so this is the time you plant in and they like share their ideas uh -huh. and everything like, oh, OK. Uh -huh. do so you it's like more learning like yeah. to me is like. Yeah. Do you understand what beets do? No. OK. I love beets. I'm addicted mm -hmm. to beets. I absolutely love beets. I love Harvard beets. I love pickle beets. I love beets. But mm -hmm. let me let me warn you, young mm -hmm. lady, when you bring me the beets and we're going to be processing <laughs> them, you know the white kitchen counters? Oh, yeah. yeah. The stain? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, that happened to me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Your I was counter... making a smoothie like this uh, this <laughs> summer and I cut them and it just fell. And I pick it up and put it in the blender. I wipe it out really, you know, quick. And then I came back in the afternoon and I had this big stain in there and I was like, what, what is, is that? that? <laughs> so yeah, it took a while to clean it because yeah, it was like yeah. a big brown. But you know what else is good on the beets? The beet greens are full of all kinds of vitamins. So if you're doing a smoothie and mm -hmm. you can stand the bitterness of the taste. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there you good, go. Yeah. 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 You use the taste. beet greens mm -hmm. because they are just full of good things. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the antioxidants and all the things that you need. So mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Well, I'm glad you were here today. Yay. And I want you, I want all of y'all to pick up Mike's book. This is, yeah, Mike's going to be with us up. once a month, and I'm excited for that. I'm so excited. He and Diane live right down the road, and we actually sold a piece of property for them. They developed a beautiful subdivision where they kept 20 acres, and they are working farmers, too. And they work, work, work. On top of being a chaplain, they play pickleball, they farm, they have chickens, they gather eggs. They volunteer. They volunteer for <laughs> everything. And, and we want to remind you again about Dominic's mission on Saturdays from what time is it? 9, nine to, to one? 1. Yeah, so they can go. We open the mission from 9 to 1. You can come in, no questions asked. You can go shop yourself. You can tell us how many people are in your family. We make a bag or a box for you. Um, and if you know of anyone, that does not drive or needs help with groceries, you can just call us too. Like you can find the phone number on their Facebook page, uh, Dominic's Mission, and let us know and we can bring it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have, like I say, I think we have like 14 people that every week we bring them groceries to mm -hmm. their home. And Mike and Diane are the ones that mm -hmm. are delivering. Yeah, he said yeah. he had been, and he loves it because he's been meeting and praying with some of the yeah. people. You know, yeah. and what a great opportunity. Yeah. You know, that, that's one of the things that we haven't lost in America. We haven't lost the ability to pray for others. And um, I, I overheard something one day, and, and they said, well, you know, I don't think you ought to include prayer in that. Well, I think you can't get through a day without prayer. I think that if we don't pray for each other and we don't pray for our world to change and we don't pray for the goodness to come out in people, I think this world's going to be in worse shape than it's in. And it's in pretty foul shape in different areas. We're seeing violence. We're seeing things happen. And, you know, you and I were talking about Mexico on the way up here. Oh, yeah. We don't want to become a country where violence takes over and you don't feel safe and in the, your own That's the way to live in, and it's hard to believe you, like, you listen to the stories and you're like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so sad. It's so sad. Mm -hmm. But um, can we mention the young man that lost his life? Because um, we need prayer for that family. Um, the m mom and two yeah. children left behind. Yes, his name is Mariel Janis. Uh, he's from Cuba and he lost his uh, life on Friday, last yeah. Friday. Uh, he was a truck driver and he was, he left his house around two o'clock in the morning and um, his wife had uh, two police officers around like six o'clock in the morning knocking on the door and she not she did not want to open the door uh, he called him um, multiple times he was not answering his phone and then he she ended up calling the cousin who is also a truck driver mm -hmm. and he knew like when she when she told him he said I had two police officers outside and he said open the door and put give me the phone and they gave him the bad news that he has passed away and, and it's very very sad because he was such a great man he mm -hmm. was super sweet like this is one of the the bet the one of the friends that i met when i moved to georgia mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he was always super sweet he was always caring um he did not have kids at that time but he was always asking for my kids and mm -hmm. he is it's, it's very sad 
But uh, yeah, as you guys can pray for him and his family, uh, his name is Mariel Janis, and uh, he was 41 years old. And has, leaves behind two children, and one mm -hmm. is deaf. Mm -hmm. And the mom, he was the sole breadwinner. Mm -hmm. So we have to maybe help them financially. I, I wanna give you some money to give to them. But um, imagine being in a country, you come from Cuba, you build the American dream, and then he's gone. Yeah. So we have to pray for her. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is for us to do. And um, we will do that, and, and hopefully people will help them financially. And, and um, I can't imagine, you know, I, I got that cold yeah, chill. Well, when my sister-in-law yeah. texted me about it, and I was like, yeah. What happened yeah. to him? But and somebody rear-ended him, didn't they? Yeah. So it was of no fault of his no at fault all. Of his, no, yeah. not at all. No. He lost his life doing his job to provide for his family, and now yeah. we that, need to. That happened in Monroe, Georgia. So they have transferred his body, remaining of his body, mm -hmm. to Woodstock on Saturday, and they reach out to the cousin because the wife is just destroyed, and usually the people say, "Hey, come and recognize the body," or Come and say your goodbyes, and the guys say there is nothing here. He's like, wow. yeah, he's like, there is, it's gonna be really traumatizing. So yeah. he's like, don't, don't come, don't yeah. come. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How sad, how sad. So when you leave home today and you go do your job, know you that um, know. any of us, it can happen to any of us. Mm -hmm. So, so say a prayer for this family. And um, say a prayer for those children because, um, you know, when dad comes home at night and you're joyfully waiting on your dad and then that day comes that he's not coming in the door. So yeah. it's time for us to get out of here. Thank you for being here yeah, today. Yeah, she and I are headed toward <laughs> Jefferson, Georgia. We have a mission. Yeah. We're headed out Highway 52 West, then we're going to <laughs> Jefferson, Georgia. We're on a mission. That's yeah. what realtors do. Pick up the phone and call us if you would like for us to list or sell your property. We would love to work with you. If you would like for us to help you find your dream home, we would love to do that too. We're gonna leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. You know, there's something about friends and friends will lift you up. They will get you through those tough days and um, they will make you laugh and smile and even look at your crazy self and go, did I really do that? Yeah, we really <laughs> do some crazy stuff. We'll yeah. see you again soon tomorrow. Yeah is Ella J Day, and we're going to be talking about old days in Ella J. I hope you will join us again only on ETC. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For you guys who are with us on Facebook, please get online and order this book. Mike Smith, God. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat